Shortly before 6 a.m. on the day of the incident, operators took steps to shut down the refinery's Fluid Catalytic Cracker, or FCC unit, for periodic maintenance and inspection. The FCC unit uses heat and a solid catalyst to break or crack heavy hydrocarbons from crude oil into smaller hydrocarbons, which can then be blended into gasoline and other products. Slide valves control the flow of catalyst between a reactor, which contains flammable hydrocarbons, and a regenerator, which contains air. It is always critical to prevent mixing of the hydrocarbons and air, because a dangerous flammable mixture can form. Under normal operation, the catalyst circulates continually between the reactor and regenerator through a carefully controlled balance of pressure. To initiate the shutdown of the FCC unit, refinery workers stop the flow of hydrocarbons to the reactor and close the two slide valves connecting the reactor to the regenerator. Circulation of the catalyst stopped. But one of the two slide valves was eroded. Catalyst from the reactor fell through the valve to the regenerator, leaving an open path for air or hydrocarbons to flow between the two pieces of equipment. Without other critical safeguards in place, air from the regenerator flowed backwards through the slide valve into the reactor. The air then moved into the main column and other equipment downstream of the reactor, where it formed a flammable mixture with hydrocarbons. At approximately 10 a.m., the hazardous mixture of air and hydrocarbons found an ignition source, and there was a large explosion. Debris from two vessels flew into the air. One piece traveled about 200 feet and hit a large above-ground storage tank, puncturing the side of the tank and releasing hot asphalt. Asphalt poured out of the tank over the containment berm and into the refinery's operating units, where it spread along the ground. At around 12 p.m., the released asphalt ignited at the storage tank and a fire broke out. The fire traveled along the stream of asphalt to the refinery's crude and FCC units. The fire produced a huge plume of black smoke, leading to the evacuation of a portion of the city of Superior. Typically, this type of asphalt fire can burn for days. A plan to extinguish the massive asphalt fire was developed by the refinery's emergency response team. The refinery began to address the fire together with the Superior Fire Department. They used a combination of dry chemical fire extinguisher and water to attack the fire from multiple directions and surround it within a containment area. With the fire contained, emergency responders were able to put out the asphalt fire at around 7 p.m. The asphalt fire had been extinguished in a matter of hours, as opposed to days as had been initially anticipated. The evacuation order was lifted, and Superior residents were allowed to return home. Nevertheless, 36 Husky employees and contract workers sought medical attention for injuries. The refinery overly relied on the catalyst slide valves to keep the air and hydrocarbon systems separated during the shutdown. But slide valves are designed to control flow of catalysts during normal operations, not to prevent flow of air and hydrocarbons during a shutdown. And one of the slide valves was eroded after years of use. Therefore, without other safeguards in place, air was readily available to pass from the regenerator through the worn slide valve into the reactor and onward into the hydrocarbon side of the process. The third safety issue highlighted by the CSB is process safety management systems. OSHA's process safety management standard and the EPA's risk management plan rule require facilities like the Superior Refinery to implement process safety management systems. Process safety management, or PSM systems, are meant to identify, evaluate, and control process hazards. But the CSB found that the refinery's PSM systems were inadequate. For instance, the refinery's process safety information did not include the operating manual published by the FCC Technology Licensor. Process hazard analyses performed at the refinery did not effectively identify hazards present during transient operations of the FCC unit, nor outline ways to control those hazards. The refinery's operating procedures lacked clear instructions and were not technically evaluated and the operator training program at the refinery did not properly prepare operators to shut down the FCC unit safely.
The deficiencies we found in superior refineries, process safety management systems directly contributed to the explosion. To prevent catastrophic incidents, companies should ensure that their PSM systems are effective at identifying, evaluating, and controlling process hazards, not just during normal operations, but during transient operations as well.